ഇൻട്രൊഡക്ഷൻ so um, i would like to start uh, this, uh, presenting our uh, our talk for today so today i shall be talking about cat for measuring machine learning resistance of path architectures a uh, probable learnability approach so uh, i have been collaborating in this work with turba chatterjee who is my present phd student and with dr aritra hazra who is my colleague in the computer science and engineering iit kharagpur so we all know the importance of paths Uh, paths essentially are extremely interesting hardware security primitives with guarantees of uniqueness instance specificness and unclonability depending on the intrinsic properties of the device uh, and uh, the, the idea i mean the paths die as an idea is uh, i would say like very promising and it has got several applications uh, however the most important requirement or challenging requirement for path designs has been its unpredictability and security against model building or machine learning attacks so in in literature there has been several uh, types of path constructions so for example arbiter path feed forward arbiter path exorb arbiter path and so on but what has been fascinating in the world of uh, path designs has been the make and break of paths so paths have been designed to secure against machine learning attacks but has been subsequently thwarted by very interesting and innovative ideas on model building strategies so this brings us to the question and motivates us whether we can build uh, you know like cat for uh, assessment of path designs so we know that empirical machine learning does not assure the delivery of an accurate model and this helps uh, this motivates us to resort to pack learning or probable learning to obtain guarantees of uh, of models uh, for certain levels of accuracy and confidence uh, denoted by say parameters epsilon and delta which i will soon talk about so why do we want cat tools so the idea is that with empirical methods often we cannot do our analysis until and unless the, the the path is implemented so you have to wait for the silicon uh, you know development of paths and we cannot perform pre silicon the version which theoretical analysis uh, opens up uh, avenues for moreover manual learnability derivations are often difficult and uh, the idea is that using such kind of cat frameworks we can perform explorations of our various composition architectures to know that whether our compositions are converging towards stronger path designs so here is a very quick overview behind the relationship of packs and paths so what is pack so the idea is that there is a concept class which we wish to learn in our case the path and in order to do so we come up with an inference which is an hypothesis class so what we want is we want to develop an approximately correct model of the path which means we want to ensure that our hypothesis approximates uh, the the target or the concept class with an upper bound of its probability usually denoted as epsilon and we also want this hypothesis to be probably approximately correct which means i want to ensure that the confidence or the probability with which my hypothesis is approximately correct is at least 1 minus delta where delta is my confidence parameter so we want to kind of develop such notions of pack and one of the uh, you know like very uh, inherent or uh, allied tool is online learning so in online learning there is no separation between the training and the prediction phase so one good way of understanding what online learning stands is by taking this mango example where uh, the idea is that each time we buy a mango it is first considered as a test example we need to predict whether it is going to taste good then after taking a bite we know its true level and depending upon whether my prediction was correct or not we can you know like use this mango itself as a training example to improve our future predictions so one of the very important uh, parameters in the context of such online algorithms are its mistake bounds which gives us an estimate of the maximum number of mistakes the online algorithm can make so in order to uh, apply such notions on paths one of the very common uh, representative functions are what are called as linear threshold functions or ltfs 
because it goes on goes on you know like goes in on uh, with the natural philosophy or natural construction of puffs quite well so the idea of lts essentially are uh, are dependent upon uh, so basically the lts tries to kind of divide the entire input class into two spaces we call often them as say the one space or the or, or, and the zero space the idea being is that there is a hypothetical hyperplane which essentially uh, which is often denoted by say a vector w star and the idea is that if i take any guess of this hyperplane and denote it as say w and take the dot product of w and my, my inputs and if it is more than a threshold then we denote it as one else we label it as zero so now in order to learn this lts a very popular online algorithm is is the perceptron algorithm so the idea is that just like our mango example if my uh, it basically does a prediction and if the prediction is wrong then it updates the weight parameters so there is a theory on the convergence of perceptron algorithms which says that the perceptron algorithm eventually converges and uh, it performs a number of mistakes which is essentially gives us the mistake bound but the mistake bound is upper bounded and the upper bound of that depends upon certain parameters which are important to measure so these parameters are often denoted as say r and gamma so r being uh, denoting the largest norm of the uh, you know like the of of an instance of your input sequence and gamma denotes the margin which means it is the minimum distance of a sample from the hyperplane so so the idea is that we would like to extend this uh, online algorithm for pack learning and here is an illustration to do that so imagine that there is an oracle which is our puff and our perceptron online algorithm inter interacts with the oracle and tries to come up with a set of hypotheses so this set of hypotheses you can conceive as nothing but estimates of the hyperplanes so there is also an allied test being performed on these hypotheses to ensure that whether the quality of the hypothesis satisfies our previously accepted notions of epsilon and delta so there is again a theorem which says that if you model this by a uh, you know like, like an ltf then the uh, perceptron algorithm is able to come up with an efficient pack algorithm which means it not only performs this learning in polynomial time but it also makes polynomial accesses to the oracle uh, to the oracle which is in our case the puff so now in order to estimate these uh, you know like the number of crp bounds or the number of input outputs which are necessary you can see that it depends upon parameters which are defined as the mistake bound so you need to estimate the mistake bound so if you look back at the literature and see uh, examples of where uh, pack learnability has been applied for various puff constructions like arbiter puffs exor puffs and so on you will see that uh, they, they have been shown to be efficient and they have been shown that if you model these puffs as uh, you know like classes of linear threshold functions and you apply perceptron based algorithms then the pack learning is efficient which means that the runtime is polynomial in terms of its input parameters and the number of oracle access is also polynomially bounded so the question is right whether you can extend it to more recent varieties of puff so one of the first examples that we try to look at was the interpose puff so the interpose puff essentially is a two layered puff where there are two layers of exor puffs interestingly the lower layer of the exor puff has an input which is called as the interpose bit which is generated by the upper layer of the exor puff so as an attacker you essentially have control of all the inputs of the lower layer of the puff but you do not know what is the interpose bit so in order to do the corresponding pack analysis what we did is we try to guess this random uh, this interpose bit in a random fashion and try to uh, construct the input vector which is denoted in this uh, illustration as phi i so you can see that this phi i depends upon my s guess which is essentially randomly guessed and once you have this input transformation being done you can essentially apply the previous theory of online perceptron algorithm in a batch mode to come up with a pack estimate so in order to find out the and in order to establish that the ipuff is indeed pack learnable you need to estimate the time as well as the crp bound which basically depends upon the mistake bound so and in order to estimate the mistake bound 
we resorted to this result, which was published in Indocrypt in 2020, which basically tells that if you take an arbiter puff and you tinker with the th bit of the arbiter puff, then the probability that the output will not be affected is given by this formulation. So now the question is right, if you, uh, you know, like, and you can extend it to XOR puffs by applying the piling up lemma, which we often apply in standard cryptanalysis. So you can get basically, so the, therefore it means that there is a probability for which even if the interposed bit affects the output, uh, affects, uh, I mean, essentially there is a probability for uh, through which the interposed bit does not affect the output. So the complement of that, that means one minus delta would therefore give me my classification noise, which means that if you are making a mistake in estimating the interposed bit, then the output will be affected. So with this background, we try to kind of formulate the probability that the hypothesis degree uh, disagrees with your target function. So in order to understand this, let us denote say CH to be the challenges for which your hypothesis returns a one and CFI to be those challenges for which the interposed bit uh, interpose path returns a one. So we denote this notation CH delta CFI to be those uh, challenges for which the outputs of the oracle and the hypothesis differ when your interposed bit is randomly guessed. So now in order to estimate the probability that the hypothesis disagrees with the target function, you can divide this into two mutually exclusive cases. In one case, where the interposed bit does not affect the R, in that case, it doesn't matter whether you predict it correctly or not. And the other part is where the interposed bit affects the R. And in this case, it is important. I mean, in this case, if the S is incorrect, then we have a disagreement. So using this, you can develop an upper bound of this probability of disagreement. So it may be noted that if you have got a very nice hypothesis, which means your epsilon is zero, even in this case, right, you will have a probability of disagreement, which essentially gives me my noise. And since the noise is essentially bounded by half, as you can see this one minus eta by two, you can show that the, you can prove that the perceptron algorithm will converge, even in spite of this noise. So, uh, and you can also prove that there is a difference between, you know, like the case where you have got a bad hypothesis and where you have a good hypothesis where epsilon equal to zero, and that gives you your margin estimate. And therefore using this margin estimate, you can now plug it into the previous equations. And from there, you can get a polynomial bound of the number of CRPs to prove that the interval of land. So now the bigger question is, can you extend this to other puffs and essentially develop a CAT framework for achieving this? So this brings us to this work, which we published and we, uh, in ICAD in 2020, we call this tool as PuffG. And we start with developing a formal language for representing these puff designs, where we have got uh, input definitions uh, of data types, the pre underlying primitives and various kinds of assignment operations like parallel operations, serial operations, where we, through which we can represent the path in a hierarchical fashion. So uh, we, we start with a, a lexical description of, you know, like a, of the formal language of, uh, which is used in the PuffG framework, where the, we, we basically start with the tokens and its corresponding grammar definitions. So once you have developed this background, you can essentially express your path in this language framework. For example, here is an example to show how a feed forward or a XOR path can be described say an arbiter path or a feed forward ar arbiter path can be described and so on. So now uh, we basically, uh, our tool PuffG has got two parts. One is the front end part and the other part is the back end. The front end takes this Puff design in this uh, described PuffG description language and follows it through a cascade of tokenization, st uh, structure initialization to finally come with what we call as an interim model. Now this interim model is fed to our back end tool to come up with an estimate of the representation of representative model, identification of the representative model, and follow it with a sample complexity calculation in an automated fashion. So let us talk about the first part, which is the front end, where we do a tokenization and follow it with an interim model generation. So what is an interim model? So the interim model is basically a hierarchical, descript a hierarchical de description of the path models, for instance, uh, you know, like you can take this example of the FF XOR APAF, which essentially instantiates a FF APAF, FF delay chain, and so on. So what we build in this is a linked list where each of these node is, uh, you know, like uh, each of these node is associated to a model definition. 
So inside the model, you can see that there are input definitions and output definitions. The input definitions are usually the input parameters and the output definitions are the return data types. The statement nodes, again, are comprised of, comprised of a hierarchical structures of various parallel and serial compositions. And the idea is that using this uh, linked list representation, you can essentially denote the, 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 the entire path composition. So this we feed to our backend tool, which uh, basically performs a recursive search, uh, which basically, uh, which, is, uh, which inherently uh, achieves a depth first traversal of this linked list and comes, with, uh, comes to your primitive modules. So these primitive modules are then searched to come, uh, to come up with suggested representative classes. And that is followed by an identification of the input transformations and the output transformations, which eventually gives you an automated uh, estimation of, uh, of your, of, of your uh, you know, like challenge complexity. So the input transformations, just to give you an example of the input transformations, so it could be, for example, uh, you know, like constructs like uh, a feed forward composition, or it could be the interpose composition that, that, that we just now saw. And likewise, the output transformations could be maybe a parallel layers of XOR paths, which are, you know, like uh, combined using an XOR operations. So there could be, you know, like other instances of input and output transformations also, which you are gradually building into the tool. So finally, uh, if there is an input transformation, then we update the representative model to LTF with noise, because the idea is that when there is an input transformation, then there are certain input bits, as we have seen in the interpose bit, uh, interpose path, or maybe you know if, if we can anticipate in an uh, in a feed forward path, where the uh, where certain internal bits are not known, and therefore we need to randomly guess, and that leads to a noise. So finally, we uh, you know like try to combine these uh, ideas because uh, and estimate the sample complexity. So note that the sample complexity would depend upon the input parameters and the representation uh, choice that we, that we make here. So in order to estimate the sample complexity, we built a node list. The node list is basically uh, a list of, uh, you know, like these input parameters and various, uh, you know, like output parameters. For example, in this case, we show uh, you know, like n and k, which are the, you know, like for an XOR puff, n denotes the inputs and k denotes the number of XORs that you are doing. FF in and FF out stands for the uh, position of the feed forward. So the idea is that when you, when you get these estimates of FF in and FF out, the tool notes that in my architecture, which are the bit positions, uh, we, are, we, are, we are basically creating an input modification. And then we can use our previously discussed theory of estimating the bias to come up with the corresponding biases of, uh, because of the, you know, like these bits getting affected. And that gives us an estimate of the margin and uh, that can essentially uh, further, you know, like lead to my estimation of the mistake bound. And then we can plug it into our equations to come up, you know, like with a sample complexity estimation. So, uh, so finally we have, you know, like implemented this tool. The front end is developed using a Lake and Yak and the backend is developed using a C uh, uh, in the C framework. So this tool has been implemented on an i5 machine and uh, it takes around 0 0.3 seconds. So, uh, and so I would like to give a very quick sort of, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, like uh, display this, how the tool works. So here is a sample run of our tool PubG.
So here are some of the learnability results from our tool. Some of them are existing in the literature, and some of them we uh, like the interpose path was one of them which we established through this tool. So this brings me to the end of my talk. So to conclude, uh, what we want to what we wanted to kind of develop is a path representation language to which so that it is expressive and essentially can cater to a wide variety of compositions. And uh, the objective being an automated assessment for pack learnability. So uh, we believe that our tool is still on the making and you know, like we are trying to add more and more extensions to this tool to incorporate components like bent functions and weak graph and so on. And uh, we would also like to develop this framework so that the assessment of machine learning relations can be performed with other quality metrics of paths like uniformity and uniqueness. So uh, with this, I would like to say thank you. And we'd be happy to address any questions. And here are some of the papers that are brought out and you can also access them. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, on the chat, I cannot see any question right now, but I have a few for you. First of all, is this tool is available or this is something which is still uh, uh, private? So, uh, I mean, of course, like we would like, we are trying to kind of uh, develop this tool and very shortly, we hope that we will be coming up with a GitHub repository for this tool. So, I mean, uh, I would say that it is it is on the making, but going to appear shortly. So the the intent is to make it a open source. So yeah. Right. 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 Exactly. Yeah. The this is a great idea. the 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 second question is uh, how you deal with uh, aging. Uh, that's a very good question. I mean, right now we are, uh, you know, like frankly uh, dealing with the quality of the composition. So the composition is essentially what we are trying to kind of estimate and that itself seems to be pretty challenging. But what you are, uh, you know, like definitely pointing out is a very important aspect. And in another direction of this, of our works, we are uh, trying to see that whether, you know, like uh, aging can be also tackled in the form of developing suitable error correction methods. And the, the idea is that one can, uh, like in one of our works, we saw, we also saw that uh, the amount of bit errors that are induced uh, depending upon, you know, like maybe, uh, you know, like the ambient conditions or depending upon the age can also be uh, probably, you know, like modeled using such machine learning tools and can be used as a parameter choice for your error corrections. So this is again, I would say like uh, a work in parallel that we are doing, but right now not integrated with the PASG framework. Thanks. Another question that I, I, I'm not sure uh, if you address it or not, uh, a popular way to handle paths is through machine learning algorithms. Mm -hmm. And the question is if your algorithm can estimate what such algorithms can do or cannot do, uh, for uh, in order to crack the model. Yeah. So, so, so I, I understand that you know, like empirical machine learning is something that we have been trying. Like you know, like we have been trying to develop various kinds of uh, attacks on path constructions using, uh, you know, like things like you know, like even from from basic machine learning to more advanced techniques like deep learning and they are extremely powerful. But uh, in this framework, we are trying to not, you know, like give empirical guarantees, but we are trying to give or make an evaluation which is based on learnability theory. So we are trying to say that uh, most of these path constructions are pack learnable, but what essentially varies among them is the path complexity or the pack complexity. So it, it, it doesn't say that, it basically says us that most of these constructions are learnable, but in practical perspectives, right, there may be different choices that uh, that we can choose, or that we can, you know, like that we can pick up. So, uh, and in that process, we we are we are basically seeing that uh, there is an interesting hierarchy of the path constructions, which means like certain constructions falls into 
you know like one form of i would say like uh, one one order of relative strength compared to the others and this can probably g- give us a new i would say you know like overview on tough constructions where you have got you know like uh, compositions of equivalent strengths against uh, you know like against la- learnability attacks okay very interesting other questions so thank you very much extremely interesting thank you uh devi i i have a, a short question actually so i mean with this uh, uh, result that you showed like what is your uh, view on the uh, on a uh, general industrial adoption of the of, of the pop or, or like they are pairing into uh, into devices because currently we have only seen puff used in a very restricted setting especially in commercial products where they are generally weak puff where output is not available so uh, and the, the the reason being like uh, strong puffs are quite uh, quite attackable or, or let's say have been demonstrated so in that case like what what is your view on this yeah so so personally i feel that you know like uh, that that what we are trying to you know like develop here is to you know like look for whether we can make strong puff which means that the response of the puff are also exposed to the adversary so it's definitely a more challenging proposition than than constructing weak puff uh, what 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 we see here is that there, is, there are a wide category of compositions for which which are amenable to you know like pack learning and therefore theoretically they are learnable but in terms of practical notions we essentially can see that uh, the amount of complexity that essentially is involved uh can you know like probably you know like uh, help us to leverage puff in i would say real life applications even for you know like things like authentication and you know like uh, you know like proof of identification so uh, so therefore right what what is important in that context when you are applying the puff for uh, real life uh, applications right it's something that we also probably do or think of when we think of you know like implementing crypto systems with side channel protections right we know that if there is an access or you know like a sort of an excessive access to the uh, to various side channel information then probably right uh, many of these crypto systems can collapse and therefore there are these notions of mm-hmm. you know like changing the key and so on so likewise right in puffs also probably you know like if we can restrict the you know like uh, the adversaries to you know like uh, us, i would say like an excessive amount of crp but uh, still not infinite then we can provide guarantees of security which we can try to you know like uh, you know like develop or bank our applications on now in another direction i would say that uh, we are actually observing that there are some puff constructions we are not fully sure but at least in our current framework they seem to be very hard to learn so we are also curious to see that whether there are other representative classes through which they can be pack learned if not i would say that they would be extremely promising propositions uh, for for constructions so one of these constructions uh, i was actually seeing in this co- conference called ashes and i believe that it will be uh, published pretty soon by one one group of researchers thank you sir thank you shivam thank you all thank you thank you very much